Hi friends and welcome. This week I have a few easy scrap wood projects for you, some vintage finds, and some upcycled decor. Thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. The first item that I'd like to share with you today is a vintage teapot that belonged to my grandmother. It's a six cup made in the USA. I did look at similar ones up online that were selling for between $30 to $80, just to let you guys know. Of course, I'll be keeping this one. All right, our first project today is an easy scrap wood project, and I still have some of those weathered gray pieces left, and we're going to use most of them up today. I have this thrifted picture frame that we'll be using along with some of that scrap wood. I scrubbed the frame very well, took it outside, and ran the sander over it. And I'm going to cut the wood board to be able to fit on the back side of this frame. I ended up cutting four boards of equal length. You see how there's an overhang on both sides? I wanted it to be nice and even. I will trim both of those boards with a jigsaw and then we'll go inside to paint the frame. I'm gonna apply gesso to the entire frame. That's gonna give me a nice base coat of primer without having to use any spray. This is how the frame looks after one coat of the gesso. Next, I'll apply one coat of the Folk Art Multi-Surface Paint. After that's had a chance to dry, we're going to flip the frame over and then we're going to hope that those boards all fit in there nice and snug. All right, I almost made it. Not too bad. I was just a hair off. I took it outside and ran the sander over it and it fit in just perfect. So now I'm going to remove all those pieces, making sure that I'm taking them out and putting them in the order that I want them to go back in so that I don't have any problems with the way that they fit. I'm applying the glue on with the paintbrush to make sure that I'm getting down even into the cracks. This is the back side of the frame. After I get them all in, I will take a cloth and wipe off any extra glue just so that it looks nicer. Now I'm flipping the frame over, making sure that any of the glue that came through is wiped off as well. I thought this would look very beautiful with a wreath or some dried flowers. And I happen to have these peonies that I picked and dried upside down. And I think that they would look really beautiful. I made these fall tags last week over on my Canva channel. And I will link that below if you'd like to make them yourself or they're going to be available over on my blog for you to print out this Wednesday. I love the speckled details and the tags and I hope that you guys enjoy them. So I drilled the hole in the center right up at the top and I have this really cool vintage style nail and I thought that that would be perfect. I tied some string around the top and our tag and this was such an easy project and just one more way that you can turn scrap wood and a thrifted item into beautiful home decor and you could easily turn a piece like this into a serving tray project number two is another easy scrap wood project this piece was sanded around the edges i took two hooks from previous projects and painted them white now i'm going to grab some mod podge and we're going to apply some on to this verse that has been printed out on tissue paper. I made several different sizes and I'll use these all for future projects. I wasn't exactly sure what size I wanted to go with. I did print this out on tissue paper, but I did not spray seal it first. Normally I do. So that is why I'm going with a very light coat of Mod Podge and I am not applying it to the top. I will spray some sealer on the whole entire piece as soon as everything has a chance to dry. All right, now that that's done, I took some of that folk art paint and added some water to it just to, to create a whitewash. I'd like to create some clay trim to go up around the verse. I'm taking my mold and applying some cornstarch and then adding clay inside the molds. Next, I applied glue with the clay molds, cut them off on the edges. I applied some of that white folk art acrylic paint, making sure that I get along all the edges. And then I'm wiping it back with a cloth. I screwed the two hooks in and I wasn't really happy with the way that it looked with the screw holes. And I had a piece of one of the clay trims left. So I cut it off, placed it across there, 
going to apply some glue. I'm very generous with the glue today. And then we're going to apply some paint and wipe that back. And I like how the stone color clay comes through and gives a nice aged look. Now I'll look at the piece closer, make sure that I haven't missed any pieces. And then I'm going to apply some spray sealer to the whole entire piece. And I'm really excited because it fits into this tiny little space in between some trim between the closet and the door. And it's the perfect size to hold a hand towel. I love that that verse will remind me all day to rejoice every time I go in to wash the paint off my hands or dirt from the garden. So Skillshare is an online community that promotes creativity and learning by offering thousands of classes on topics, including illustration, design, photography, video, writing, and much more. You can take classes to level up your current skills or to relax and learn something new, like my daughter and I did taking a learn to draw class from Gabrielle Bricky. We found her class to be very well thought out, easy to follow, and very organized. You don't have to take the class all sitting down at once. You can watch different segments multiple times, and you can watch them on the go on your phone. The first 1,000 people to use the link or my code Creative DIY Purpose will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. Share with you guys this thrifted find, and I learned something new with this. I think these are so beautiful. And I've seen the two handle cups before and had no idea what they were. And when I looked them up on Google, it said that they are bullion cups. So I thought that that was really neat. And there's when I first picked them out, I thought that they were from the same company because the designs look so similar, but they're actually two different companies. And if you look at the print really close, you can see some differences in the flowers but they're both raised 3D images with the um, gold trim on the top. But I just thought they were really pretty and wanted to share them with you guys. Project number three is another easy scrap wood project. These are the pieces left over from the picture frame project that we did earlier. I'm going to take that narrow piece of wood and get two pieces out of it. I applied those pieces on one on the top and the bottom with wood glue. I sanded all of the edges and the back and drilled a hole into that top part. I found another one of those vintage style nails and I'm hammering it in in the top. And I just want to make sure that it's in there really good because it's going to hold uh, one of the antique insulators. And I'm loving that hammer. Look at the beautiful patina on that. I picked that up at a yard sale last year for 50 cents. I was so excited. So I'm taking one of the smallest insulators that I have. And I sh this is part of that wire that I showed you guys, I think, on the wood project number two video. It This came off of a, like a pallet. But the gauge of this wire is so thick that it it's just not easy to bend. I had every intention on wrapping it around the insulator and that didn't work out really well. I have this thin copper wire and I'm wrapping that around several times around the insulator and that is going to hold the wire handle in place. Now when I put it up on the nail, you'll see here how it's not even. I do fix that and you can see it in the final reveal. I would have liked it a lot better with some thinner wire, but I think that I made it work with what I have. And if you have a larger one, you can use it as a succulent planter holder. You could use it as a vase. I just put dried and faux flowers in there, but you could also put a, a faux candle or maybe even a real votive candle. Project number four, we're gonna upcycle this little dresser jewelry box it does have water damage around some of the edges and along the bottom i'm going to first clean the piece remove the drawers remove the knobs and start with some fine grit sandpaper probably start with 220. i think it came out really well i used 120 on the front of the drawers and on the top of the little dresser 
along all the edges and the rest of the piece, I used 220. There's still a little spot down there on the corner where it is a little puffed out. And I do end up going over it again with 220 sandpaper when I distress it. And it definitely minimalizes it. I applied the Folk Art multi-purpose paint to the whole entire piece. And I want to make clay molds for the front of the dresser. And I love this clay mold. This is a Prima and I have it linked below in the description. It's amazing quality. Because the mold was wider than the actual drawer, I did have to cut up some of the design. So I made sure I did that to all three pieces. I used a small paintbrush, dipped it in the water, and went around each mold to try to remove the seam. The clay pieces have sat there for probably about two hours. I'm applying a generous amount of glue to the back of each piece, and then I will use a ruler to make sure that I have them all centered properly. Now, I have not had any problem with them cracking or shrinking too much after they dry once they've been glued on. I do make sure that they are in a room where the temperature is moderate around 65 degrees. One of the tips that my daughter taught me because she uses clay a lot, both the air dry and the Palmer, is to put a damp paper towel over the top of them if you're afraid that they're going to dry too quick and crack. I then take a clean paintbrush and go along the edge of the clay piece to make sure that it's completely pressed down onto the wooden drawer. Checking one last time to make sure that they're even. Brushing on one coat of the acrylic paint in the and this is the all-purpose paint. Then taking a cloth and wiping it back so that it has a distressed age look. I did paint the knobs to match. I just haven't put them on yet because I'm not sure if I want to go with a different option. What would you do? Would you put those wooden knobs on or would you do something different? Let me know in the comments below. Also, please be sure to let me know, would you like to see more vintage finds more wood scrap projects, or upcycled and repurposed DIYs. Friends, I want to thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Have a super blessed week, and I'm going to see you next Sunday. God bless.